So uh, my name is Vidal Alcázar, and this is a joint work with uh, Susana Fernandez and Daniel Borrajo here. Um, uh, we're going to talk about um, the impact of partial states in two particular cases, which is um, duplicate detection and collision of frontiers. So in case you don't know, um, if you don't know it, uh, partial states are states in which there are some values, for example, here uh, that are unknown. And um, for example, the goal definition is usually a partial state. The preconditions of the actions are partial states too. And an interesting case here is uh, to see the relationship between two states in which the values may be the same, but um, for some variables it is unknown, and for others uh, it is known. The most important case here is um, the so-called subsumption of states, in which uh, there are two states. Uh, one of them uh, dominates each other because um, essentially kind of a smaller state represents more complete states, and if its g value is, um, is at least uh, equal or smaller, then you don't have to care actually about the other one. Um, if you think uh, about this in regression, it's actually trying to achieve fewer goals. Of course, it's going to be better, right? Um, then again, in, in the place in, in the cases that we mentioned in the title, I'm going to go first over um, duplicate detection uh, in regression. Uh, in this case, for example, um, most people use a hash table implementation to uh, duplicate, uh, to detect duplicates. However, um, in the formalized, some the states are not defined the same way, so a hash function won't give you the, the same value and it will be unable to detect these cases. For this, um, we're going to try two alternatives. Uh, first of all, disambiguation of states and uh, second binary decision diagrams. I'm going to go over a um, small example just you, so you can see what this looks like. So, for example, think of a um, block score problem with only two blocks, uh, with, uh, yeah, only two blocks, so the goal is on A, B, and then you stack which in regression is unstacking, in fact, and then you unstack it. So um, departing from um, uh, an state in which you only have on A, B, that's the only thing you know, you get to a, a state uh, in which there, there's more stuff, but I mean, it is the same thing, right? So you do something and then you undo it, so it doesn't really make sense to expand another such tree that, uh, whose root may be that, that new state, because it's the same thing, and humans can easily see that, but hash functions can't. So, um, so yeah, over, um, going over uh, the first uh, alternative, this ambiguation means uh, filling the partial states with more information in the sense that uh, this happens uh, because we are um, not inferring some information that could, we could infer. Um, this is usually done with exploiting state invariants like mutexes and, and exactly one invariant groups. Uh, in the previous example, for example, we depart from on A, B but there are no more blocks. So for example, we can infer that the arm is empty, that B is on top of the table because there are no other blocks. You can put it on top. And, um, and if we disambiguate the goal state, we'd have that um, after doing this stack and stack thing in regression, we will have the same state and it will be properly detected as a duplicate by hash function, right? So, um, so that's, a, that's a huge advantage. Anyway, um, this is usually done per state, but uh, you can also try to disambiguate the action preconditions so uh, doing in regression, going in regression, you will get fuller partial states, which may you save doing this disambiguation per state. Um, the second alternative uh, are BDDs, binary decision diagrams. These are compact structures that represent uh, functions, in this case, a Boolean function. And uh, we're going to do this duplicate the closed list using a BDD, so uh, we can make a query whether uh, a state belongs to a set or not, the set uh, of states that we have visited. Um, the typical case in planning is usually good in terms of size and, and time for both uh, the query and the size. And um, although we have to still uh, keep the hash table because um, it cannot store uh, neither pointers to the points, neither G values. Um, to get a more clear picture of what ability looks like, uh, this is one VDD, for example, that encodes several states in a typical logistics domain. Um, for example, say that S belongs to the closed list already, and the, this path, which is highlighted in red, um, is kind of the query that represents that this state actually goes to the true no, saying that, yes, it is true, that we saw it. So um, if we open some, um, some new state, which is uh, the same, but in which, case, in which um, track two appears too, which will be subsumed unless uh, the, G's, uh, the G's is smaller. If we follow the same path, I mean, if we take the decisions at every single node, you will see that we will follow the same path that we will get to a true sync node, which means that uh, that state is subsumed. Um, 
I'm going to go some over some small experimentation here in regression. I will pass to uh, the collision of front GS case. So FDR is fast downward in regression, right? Versions labeled with uh, B use BDDs. Versions labeled with D use uh, disambiguation per state. And everything, every action per condition has been disambiguated. And the goal state has been disambiguated too, which is got to be done only once. So um, first part, first uh, on the left or right hand side, is um, time score privacy rules, and then you get the coverage. So for example, if we go here, over here, and we take a look at the second column and the fourth column, that's BDDs and no BDDs. And we can see that the coverage is pretty much the same except for Sokoban, which is a domain in which substantial states happens a lot, because you push uh, stones and then you push them back, and you get more um, stuff which is known, um, and that's harmful, yet using BDDs is, is actually good. You get also improvements in parking, and here Visitog, who's, um, which is really bad for BDDs because you cannot find another in good ordering of variables to represent uh, the closed list. We actually lose some problems. Anyway, the conclusion here is that the uh, substantial states doesn't seem to be that problematic as long as you disambiguate the preconditions of the actions and the, and the goal states. Um, disambiguation per state is also beneficial, but uh, taking into account that disambiguation also allows pruning extra states when you're going in regression. So partly, um, this bare performance comes from that. Anyway, um, the same case in Sokoban occurs, and if we combine both of us, then we get the, the highest coverage in regression. Of course, there's an overhead, so um, there's a small trade-off, but as we can see, it really depends on the domain. Basically, it really depends on how many unknown stuff there is for disambiguation and how good you can represent the closed list with a BDD. So um, second case, which may be more interesting for you, more appealing, is um, collision of frontiers. I mean, since uh, heuristic search as planning was proposed, this was like 15 years ago, we already had a, a planet that went forward, another one went backward, right, the HSPR. And um, yet no one tried to make a bidirectional implementation of this thing. And actually, in satisfying planning, we don't care about optimality. So um, as opposed to the optimal settings in which we have to prove optimality after the collision of frontiers, here, if frontiers collide, we can just stop and get the valid solution, and that's it, potentially cutting the, the depth in half, right? Um, so um, in this case, we have complete states forward, partial states backward. Uh, this ambiguation does not suffice because we need whole states for that, but BDDs work perfectly okay, so we can always encode the closed list of the backward search as a BDD. Now, um, the novelty here is trying to use front-to-front -front heuristics that may work in planning, and for this we're using backward genetics goals. These backwards generated goals um, are just subsets of intermediate goals that originally were um, generated using actions uh, of the relaxed plan, right? Essentially, they are just, um, if you think about it in a heuristic computation, they're just subset of, uh, of propositions uh, that conform a dummy action that achieves the goal. Say, for example, you got the front here, and then you get a shortcut that goes to the goal directly from the front here, and that's, that's where it is, really. It's not really more complicated. It counter that decrements whenever you achieve a condition in, um, in the relaxed exploration of the heuristic combination, and, and it behaves like this, right? If you think of this of, as levels of the relaxed graph plan, then you will get to the BGG with uh, the least H max value and get the relaxed plan out of it. If it yields zero, then um, frontiers have collided. Um, of course, there's an overhead to this, so two alternatives. I'm going to go really fast over this. Uh, first of all, remove a random. You, you know, keep some bounds on, on the size of the BGGs and try to find a representative set of BGGs that may encode uh, what the frontier, the passing frontier looks like. In this case, 200K, uh, 2K nodes, and then uh, we go to 1,000 gates. Second alternative is using sparse data structures, right? We don't need to use a greedy best for search, a best for search algorithm. We can use, for example, um, random planning trees, which alternative go to unexplored areas of the search space, and the goal. Um, this, is, this is really a teaser, uh, not, not so much of a data talk because it is really short. Um, huge table here split in three parts. Um, this is fast downward in progression, fast downward in regression, this is a portfolio that combines both approaches, and this level with C actually is got collision of frontiers implemented. And as you can see here, the results are the same, except for one problem which is lost there. 
after the creation of, pro, uh, of frontiers, we try to um, to find uh, the the state, and while traversing the hash table to find that state, we not really, we run out of time. So um, essentially, the picture that we get here is that with front to back heuristics in uh, highly dimensional search spaces like planning tend to usually pass over each other, and it's not really good. Um, some experimentation with it uh, just showed that. Um, um, always uh, the collision happens really close to the opposing goal. BDGs uh, pay for the overhead, sparser BDGs are better, but still not good. And uh, about the, the random planning trees, it's really hard to parameterize. So uh, this goes forward, backward, uh, bidirectional, bidirectional with BDGs, which is again a collision of frontiers implementation. Um, really varied results. I can go over these afterwards or in the poster. And, and that's it, essentially, the conclusions we get is that substantial states is kind of overstated um, as long as you do this ambiguation of the actions, right? And the uh, collision front is a really complex problem. It seems like front to back heuristics are hopeless for the most part because of what I've told. Um, BGGs uh, have a lot of overhead and have another problem, which is, for example, H values that become obsolete in the open list and so on, yeah, yada, yada. And um, trees look more promising indeed, but this requires extensive parameterization and, and, and experimentation. So um, that was it. Yeah, you're welcome to come to the poster uh, this evening. Uh, thanks for everything. Just since there's so much overhead with the BDDs, have you considered using the, the match tree data structure? That's inside. Yeah, I mean, th those are tries. Um, and those were proposed already by um, Patrick Eirich. Um, I'm at the hammer. Mm -hmm. I got a small paragraph comparing theoretically because I got no experimentation uh, with, with that kind of stuff. Um, sure, the theoretically, they're not as good, but uh, empirically, they do very, very well for similar things. Well, as, as far as I know, the problem is with the query in the sense that there's a bottleneck in the query. BDDs have this advantage here that um, this is not, um, okay. Uh, all right, there you go. So essentially, there, there are no um, tries. The problem that they have is that they have to encode this unknown value, and there are branches that, that you have to go over. For example, say this is a try, and this, which is a tree like a structure, then you would have here an edge with an unknown value. You have to go down both of them, whereas here in, in, in BDDs, you have to only go one path, meaning that in tries, you may explore an exponential uh, number of paths when doing this query. And that's why. Um, I, I get the intuition that tries are usually slower on a per state basis for queries. However, I mean, future work is just comparing structures that may be good for this uh, particular case. So are you, are you just concerned with the uh, data structures for representing, rep uh, representing the frontier meeting? Or are you also exploring the interplay between the particular style of uh, bidirectional search, like single frontier bidirectional search, or, and so on and so forth, with the closed lists that you have well, to implement? Well, I mean, the thing is that um, it is a problem common to both cases, and it can only be solved using alternative structures. So uh, that's why I took a look at this. Um, also, this comes from the, from, I mean, the, the motivation also comes from the fact that symbolic search implicitly this with this problem. So I thought that a BDD, you know, over um, explicit state search algorithm would do quite okay. Um, again, I mean, you cannot have one without the other. Structures are coupled with this kind of problems, either for, I mean, for both cases. If, if there are uh, no more questions, I suspect we should thank the speakers and uh, I'll go for coffee.